so that's the, the kind of, that's just, those are just the, 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 the six um, galleries that we're highlighting the collection. And then we're putting those in dialogue with, we have four um, project galleries in the museum. Can you see the first one? And as you enter the museum, the, the first project gallery is on, on the left. And this is this really fantastic installation by, by Hugh Locke. Um, some of you may know Hugh. I mean, he, he works in, in, um, in London, but he grew up in Guyana. Um, he, he did this piece, um, this installation actually for um, a biennial in, um, in England, the Folkestone, it was a triennial, um, and which was a kind of seaside town in England. Um, but, um, but he said he was thinking of places like Miami, places like um, the Caribbean Sea um, for this piece. And, and it's about 79 boats from all over the world, they, or the, the types of boats reference boats from Indonesia, colonial boats, um, Japanese boats, um, and, and each of them are, are tied to specific narratives about perilous sea journeys. And he sees them as votive boats, as kind of like, um, he saw in a church in Portugal um, that the fishermen would put little boats um, as a symbol of giving thanks to safe passage after a difficult you know, night on the sea. And, and he was influenced by that to sort of um, create an installation that sort of talked about many different types of um, journeys on the sea. And one, it's very hard to see here, but one, one of the, the pieces that's particularly relevant in um, the context of Miami is that it's kind of a ra like a very um, rough raft, you know, that sort of relates to um, the Balseros, the Cubans trying to literally, you know, cross the, the sea that's right in front of the, the museum. And, and Haitians trying to cross to, to get to Miami. So we, it's not a piece that was made, you know, it's not a, um, made for us, but we thought that it was very relevant to where we're positioned. And you're literally looking out at um, where the cruise ships and the boats kind of leave um, the harbor in, in Miami. So it was a, and it's a great entrance. And, and it talks about a lot of things. It talks about migration. It talks about, um, um, you know, like the, the history on the sea in all its, positive and negative forms. You see that? We have a couple of the project galleries where we're showing two videos that we commissioned. Bushra Khalili is a Moroccan artist um, who works very much in relationship to questions of um, kind of the quote unquote illegal um, laborers um, in various parts of the world. And in this case she did, they're called the, the speeches series. And she interviews kind of illegal um, immigrants or you know, people without papers working. In this case, it was New York. And she interviewed two African men and um, three Mexican workers about sort of the American dream or, or about you know, like what, how they negotiate um, you know, their livelihood and legality um, within the US system. And very, very hard hitting, very strong, very kind of anti, uh, you know, kind of, the US in many ways, but can we see the next image? And then upstairs we have a huge gallery that's a double height gallery that um, we commissioned a piece by a Polish artist named Monika Sosnowska, um, really interesting artist who, um, it's hard to get a sense of the scale, but this is gigantic and it kind of hangs above your head. And what she's referencing is kind of um, shelving and kind of informal architecture that's made um, to sell um, products on the black market in Warsaw, like cell phones and bags. It's a little bit hard to see, but there's kind of racks and little, these are kind of the, the roofs of little houses where people set up these, these kind of stands to buy, you know, kind of technically kind of like um, illegal goods. Um, and, and she takes the, that architecture and kind of twists it and, and kind of all her work sort of kind of wraps metal around itself in a way that feels very kind of strange and uncanny, almost like some, I don't know, it's being sucked up into the ceiling in some way. But um, interesting artist. We're interested in, talk, in working with her, kind of thinking about, she talks a lot about kind of Soviet or post-communist, the post-communist moment in, in Warsaw. And, and we thought that had an interesting dialogue with questions of like Cuba and China and these kind of, um, kind of post-communist um, moments that we're living right now. We see the next one. And then the, the, the fourth project gallery, we're showing an Israeli artist named Yael Bartana. And she did a film that she did in Sao Paulo in Brazil um, 
kind of about an evangelical sect that is actually building a one-to-one -one scale model of the Temple of Israel, this gigantic um, construction. Um, and, and she did a video sort of about the destruction of this temple because the original temple in Israel was destroyed two times. And so the fact of trying to build this in a place, you know, in Sao Paulo, kind of implies um, kind of the legacy of it being destroyed in some way. So, so it's, a, it's, a very, it's a very dramatic film, but uh, um, can we see the next? And then we have three, I'll just do these quickly, the focus galleries, which are medium-sized galleries where we're showing different collections. This is a series of uh, about 150 photographs from our collection, and, um, and we're, we're hanging them, it's called Image Search, and we're thinking about how we look at images now on the, on the internet and how you, you go to image search and one image leads to another. It's kind of, um, they're never contextualized. They're, they're kind of, you kind of, you go deeper and deeper or you look for formal relationships. In, um, and so here we kind of created a, a salon style kind of hanging with no information, no labels. You can get sort of the information on these iPads in the room. And they, um, but it's more like a visual journey, like one image visually leads to another and leads you kind of around the room. So we were just kind of playing with the way that images are read now, um, digital images versus kind of historic photography. This, I left a, a catalog here, and I hope people get to see it, of this uh, exhibition. Um, it's it's a pri it's an exhibition of a private collection from Miami, but it's about um, visual and concrete poetry. It's about it's a collection that's based on um, all artists using text and really starting as far back as kind of Mallarmé and you know the turn of the century how artists started to sort of break apart text in ways where you don't know if it's text or if it's a, an abstract image and this collection really highlights that and um, and they they've actually looked to many parts of the world for for work um, you know in this vein and. Um, they have different sections. They have a section about typewriter art and how artists, um, a lot in the 60s and 70s, used typewriters to kind of create abstract um, um, patterns and drawings. And, um, and, and we produced a nice book about this, so I hope that we can look at that. You know, that's in the library here or in the reading room. Can we see the next one? And then we just opened um, Edouard de Valcarrier. I, I don't even have images of the installation, but um, that was last week or the week before. Um, and Edouard is a, a Haitian-born artist um, who's lived in Miami since the, um, the early 90s. Um, and he, we invited him to do a whole new body of work and, um, for kind of a medium-sized gallery. And, and he created a whole series of, of large-scale works called, and it, the series is called Imagined Landscapes. And he's really looking at um, the Caribbean landscape, various parts. Um, various, specifically he's looking at several 19th century painters from the U.S. who went to Brazil, um, Jamaica, Panama, um, I'm forgetting what, uh, and did these very idyllic scenes. And these U.S. painters were actually commissioned to go and kind of, um, kind of promote visions of the Caribbean, kind of very kind of exotic or um, you know, kind of very positive images. And, and he's interested in what was left out of those images. Um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, what are the histories that were not addressed or the people. There, all these images that he's kind of copying from the 19th century, there are no figures, there, there are no humans. It's, is that, it's as if you're a 19th century, you know, US, like, you know, white explorer kind of coming to this virgin land. And, so what he's done is like the composition in a painting like this is from, in this case, it's um, um, Martin Johnson Heed. Um, it's, the piece is called After Heed, um, was one of these artists who went to, um, um, in this case, it was, it's, a, it's a scene from uh, Jamaica. It's called the Fern Tree Walk. It's like a walk that looks out on the, on, on the bay. Uh, and so Edouard has copied that um, composition and then added his own sort of kind of spirit figure. Um, and he's done it, it's very hard to photograph these works, but he's actually, he's painted on aluminum and then um, uh, in a black background and then kind of drawn in glitter glue. So it actually, all these paintings actually sparkle, like uh, they, they glitter and, um, and, um, and but, they're, but they look very, so they attract the light, but they're very dark. They're, they're kind of all have this 
um, predominance of black. Um, and he talks about sort of shadows and sort of like the black side of the tropics, kind of like draining the color from, from these images and, and kind of talking about what's kept in the shadows or the histories that aren't <coughs> talked about. And, and these kind of figures that are, are kind of faceless but often patterned, he, he's talking about sort of the influence of kind of, um, kind of the spirits, the indigenous and African spirits that float in these spaces and, and kind of um, that are there. You know, um, he says in Haiti they're called the bien bien, like the, the spirits that are around from the past. So, it's a, it's a very interesting insight, and, and one of the, he's an artist that is um, also in the Caribbean Crossroads um, uh, um, exhibition, and so we kind of wanted to give him his own moment and his own uh, chance to show his new work, and then um, the public will be able to see some of his you know, um, older work in the Caribbean Crossroads. But we see the, and then the last galleries um, uh, are the largest galleries in the museum where we show special exhibitions, which. Um, this is an image of um, the Ai Weiwei exhibition that we had, um, that we just closed, and this is where the um, Caribbean Crossroads will be shown. This is, the next one. This is also the Ai Weiwei um, um, show. I mean, many people may have heard about the broken, the famous broken base. I don't know. The people, um, a, um, a few weeks ago, uh, probably about a month ago, um, uh, an artist came in and broke. I should have brought one of the images of the piece for the other. Um, but he he kind of he broke one of these vases and um, and said that it was sort of a, a protest against a lack of um, representation of local artists in the museum. But um, and so it you know this um, you know unfortunately he's being prosecuted and it's and it's a not a pleasant situation. But um, um, we I mean I mean we do show a, a lot of local artists, so it was it's not a really kind of. A, I think he was, he, he was just in a bad moment and he t did this act and, and he has said he didn't know it was valuable and it's, it's an interesting dialogue, it's created a whole conversation about vandalism in relationship to art and there are many um, historical references to artists kind of intervening or damaging other artists' work. Um, Ai Weiwei um, felt that, I mean he only responded, he didn't really want to give more um, fuel to the situation but um, but he said that he was not particularly impressed if it was a it was a, if it was an action, um, you know, kind of protesting a lack of visibility for artists. Why would one artist destroy another artist's work? And so, and I think that's a good good way to sum up some of the feelings. Like, why do you have to destroy? It? If you want to protest, you know, do it in a different way that doesn't damage a peer's work. And, and um, so, it's been an interesting, you know, it's it's um, it's kind of been a media storm and and. and uh, I would I would hope we're known for things other than breaking faces over the years, but but um, just briefly the next images you know just um, thinking about Caribbean crossroads and um, crossroads of the world and um, and you know I think I mean Annalie and I have definitely talked about it and we were talking a little bit um, today you know um, these types of shows are problematic and, and meaning trying to cover such a or address the entire Caribbean in one exhibition is really impossible, and and um, um, and it was it, and and you know it was a very strong internal dis discussion as an institution whether um, we we had agreed to take this exhibition before we even saw the exhibition. I, I knew some of the organizers, um, and then you know um, the organizer, the El Museo. Um, they weren't going to travel, then they suddenly decided they couldn't travel the show and we decided to kind of re-edit and um, give it a new life. And, um, um, and it's, it's a complex um, proposal and there are many people, you know, when you do a show of this, many people will be left out or feel in, you know, that they're being excluded or included or why are certain people included? Um, and it's trying to do a lot. It's a really, it's a show that's showing work from the 18th century to the present, and and I wrestled with it a lot whether we should do it. But um, but part of me felt at least it would start a conversation, and a, and a, and and we we could sort of um, use it as a as a starting point to really kind of critique these types of exhibitions and what kind of history needs to be written from from this point forward.